Hi and welcome to this new tutorial that today is going to be about blood. I will suck your blood. No, I'm not talking about blood like in uh, Gore and Dracula and so on, but uh, more like in a medical term. Um, let's pull up Google here for a second and search for blood cells. Now, a lot of you have seen stuff like this in animations around in TV series or uh, CSI or something like that. And that's mostly common how they are displaying blood cells in the veins. So I thought, why not show a little tutorial about how you can uh, model slash animate this. So, I'll minimize this and go into modeling here. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna hit the plus key to be able to set some points here to uh, to make my blood vein like this. Control P to convert into a spine. I can then use Control T to drag here to change the shape of the vein a bit as I see fit. Perhaps like this. Then I'm gonna change layer here, put the curve in the background, and I'm gonna make a disc here that is going to be the shape of uh, the curve. So, to surpass this, I'll drag this is to 6, and one segment here, and OK, OK, and then I'm gonna drag this up here. Now this is what is called a relic extrude in light wave, and most of you are familiar to this. I need to line up the plane here to the start of the curve, and that has to be the start point of the curve. And then I hit Control R to do relic extrude, and to control my points, I click this and say, and I would like say eight points or ten points here. That's going to be the segment here through. As you see now, um, and I'll delete the first and the last polygon here, like this, and we have a hollow tube. Just for the sake of it, I hit tap here to smooth out with sub patches and Q for surface, and I call this vein. And let's make it red. Okay, smooth, so on, so on. I'm not going to make the huge texture out of this, but you can do this if you want to try to make a more exotic version. Now we need this curve. I don't need any more. I delete this, and I'm gonna make a small blood cell here. I do this by making a disc. Go in here. Say perhaps this like this and I'm going to select the top and the bottom and deselect the middle B for bevel B for bevel like this and I'm then going to select point mount select these and press L to connect these Otherwise, this was, would have six edges and it will not be sub patchable unless I go into cut mode clock. So, tap for sub patch, and you see now I have my blood cell here. I can take these two, drag down a bit more, like this. Okay, then I'll <coughs> save this scene. On this object here, let's call it blood cell tests. Uh, we'll write the old one, and uh, I'm ready to go into layout. So, send to layout. Now here you see my tube and my blood cell here. I'll take my blood cell, move it out here. Uh, it could be a problem that uh, my uh, zero is around here, 
So I'll just go into modeler here and F2 to center my plot cell. S for save and back into modeler again. Like this. Um, my tube here, I'll turn surface, I'll turn on double sided. So we have inside and outside. And I want the camera to be inside the, the tube here. So um, if we go into camera view, I can move in here and you see the camera is rather big uh, compared to the tube. So uh, what I do to fix that is D, press the D key and set the grid size down to say 10 centimeters. And I'm going to press P for properties on the camera and adjust the focal length a little here. Like this, and I can now look through the tube here, the vein. Now I am going into here, going to top view, and as you see now, my camera is rather small compared to the tube like this. I will then go into my dynamics here and place a wind dynamic. I have a panel here for the wind. Um, if you see here, the direction currently is upwards, so I will rotate this and I will say change the size here down to perhaps this and then I will drag it out so it kind of blows into the vein here like this. I could adjust the power here same perhaps 40 percent or something uh, at according to the speed you would like. <coughs> now for the, uh, if I blow wind in here it's not like it's going to get through the tube but I could go up here to direction and select animated path and click OK and now get two points here uh, handle one and handle two handle one is here in the start of the wind and handle two is in the, the end of the wind now I could drag up here and say like this go to top view here but that will not get like a, a correct flow inside the tube so I'll drag this back to around here rotate about a bit around here so now I click Control C to make a clone of this point now what light will th then will do is to continue the path so I can take this new point and drag it out even f further here in the tube as you see, control C again make a new clone like this, I'm changing it between side and top view like here and control C again and drag that out and a little bit up and if we go here see now you can see my wind uh, path is kind of funneling the tube uh, this might need some tweaking but you will get the idea how this is working now I need to add a particle emitter in here so I'll go to dynamics and add particle and I'll hit ok I'll get a box here then, and I'll say perhaps here the birth rate of the particles perhaps is 25 or something. And I'm going to say the C axle here will be zero, and this might be let's say point four, point four like this. And I'll drag this down to the entrance of the vein here. Check the side view here. That's about it. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, for this animation to be be useful, I need to add up some frames here. So I'll change this to say 200, and I'll need to change the particle age here to 200 also. Now, if I slide here, you will see the particles are flowing through. I just put this to wire here. And you can see the particles are flowing through the with the wind through the tube. So we are almost done now. I will then switch back here, close this, and I'll go to utilities and to additional and I'll select FX linger here. Um I'll then here have the particles which is the emitter. And I have the wind here, but the wind is not what I'm going to replace here. I'm going to place each particle with the blood cell, like this. But first I need to know how many particles is within the scene. So I slide to image 200 here, select the wind and press P for properties. I can see now 172 particles have been emitted. So I'm going to make six uh, one hundred and uh, seventy two clones. Rotate this up a bit like this, just for fun. And now I'll select the FX linger again. Select the blood cell here. And I'm going to say one hundred and seventy two clones. And down here, normally this is zero zero. Uh, I'm going to select this down here, which is going to spin the particles around a bit, uh, so it it's not such a static animation. So I'm going to say, for instance, 180 and 360 and 360 down here, and I'll press OK. Nothing else is touched. Just here, the amount of copies, the blood cell, and uh, the rotation here. Press OK. And it will think that now all my particles have been in ch exchanged with the blood cell. And if I now go into the camera view here and slide the bar here, you can see nice floating blood cells coming through the vein. And you of course can control with the birth rate of the particles how many blood cells you want to flow through the vein or how you want it to, to look. So I hope this can help you when you are going to make uh, something similar or perhaps some blood. So this is the end of this tutorial and uh, I'll be back soon. Cheer around.